I'm Dan St. Ives, and for today, I'm talking with Canadian singer-songwriter Jeffrey Straker, who's going to be coming to Calgary to perform at the Calgary Folk Club Friday, October 10th. How you doing today, Jeffrey? I'm doing very well. Thanks for chatting. Excellent. Uh, I wanted to just touch base uh, really quickly, uh, talk to you a little bit about uh, your, your career to date, some highlights, and uh, we want to bring people that, that may not be familiar with your music to uh, to the resources that are available, especially your website. i got to tell you, I, I've spent some time on your website and your Facebook page, and uh, you're, you've got amazing production and concepts that uh, you've put into your videos, especially Slings and Arrows. I, I just love that one. So is there anybody in particular you'd want to give a shout-out, or, or is that your own brainchild? Well... Um, my music videos, I've been working on them, I guess, probably for the last five or six years as sort of my music has evolved. And I've worked on them with a, with a few different people. Um, I started out with this guy just outside of Toronto. But then recently, Slings and Arrows was done, um, it's probably one of my most, most recent ones, and it was done by this, a guy in Regina. His name's Chris Triffo. So thank you, Chris Triffo. He, uh, he's like a Canadian film guy. He, he makes, um, does com commercial work. He does Canadian TV work. Um, that a lot of people have seen, and he's my neighbor in Redan. And so we end up at a lot of the same parties, and you know how those things go, especially with a few drinks. It's amazing the favors you can ask. <laughs> so he was gracious enough to um, do me a huge favor and help bring that Slings and Arrows video to life with a lot, with all resources from the film community in Regina. Wow. Well, I'll tell you, production quality and and concept just just outstanding. And that's just one. I mean, there's a you've got a number of uh, of examples of your music videos, and you've got a link to your YouTube channel. Uh, in Regina specifically, now that you've mentioned that, uh, you're competing against three other local musicians for Prairie Dog Magazine's annual round uh, roundup of Regina's best people, places, and things, and. Only until October 20th can people vote to see that uh, you might be the ultimate winner. Could you, could you imagine? <laughs> but, you know, in all seriousness, though, I didn't know that I was up for this. Um, probably fault all of my own. My head is often buried in the sand and I'm working hard and whatever, and sometimes I don't come up for air. But then the other day on Facebook, someone posted, oh, delighted to be in the company of blah, 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 for such and such. An award with the prairie dog, and I was one of the people. And I said, "My God, I didn't even know I was up for this. Never mind." So thank God for Facebook tagging. But um, but it is an honor all the same. Uh, prairie dog is a great little regional uh, magazine, and uh, they have a lot of readers. So maybe maybe uh, maybe people will vote. I don't know. We'll find out. October twentieth, Prairie Dog Magazine. Go there and vote. Please vote. <laughs> I've, I've mentioned this to other artists before, that there's so much pride here in Canada. Uh, we've accomplished so much on the world stage as musicians and artists. Uh, did you ever feel that uh, growing up in small town Saskatchewan, there were any limits to what you could achieve starting out as a singer-songwriter? So, well, growing up in, a, in small town Saskatchewan and the whole music thing was, was funny for me because I, although I was... Like, I guess blessed to have a local music teacher in a town of 300 people, you know, who a piano teacher who I could start sorting out music with and seeing if I even liked it from such a young age. Even though I could do that, I never ever saw music as something I wanted to do as a career. Like it, it wasn't in the cards, and it's because you there was no one doing it. There was there were no there was no one who'd become a professional musician, like quote unquote, um, who I could sort of look to as a role model in that regard. Like to me, music was a hobby at best. And for a while in my classical training, because I'm classically trained, um, I was kind of maybe thinking I might be a classical pianist, like for, for a while. Thank God I saw the light on that one, because <laughs> if you think being a singer-songwriter is tough, let me tell you. But that's a, that's a whole separate thing. But So I grew up with, 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 the, with these local, incredible local piano teachers in my little town, the next neighboring town I went to the next teacher, and ultimately ended up at the University of Regina when I was still in high school studying piano. Um, it was, it was just something I loved doing, and and the one thing each of them did was they instilled this notion in you that they're like, yeah, Jeffrey, you've got some talent, but there's a lot of people who have some talent, and if you want to be good, you got to work, like you got to practice. And by the time I was in grade twelve in high school, I was practicing piano five hours a day, <laughs> like it was, it was, it was a lot. When I look back, like I'm like, I'm lucky I didn't drive myself insane, and maybe I did, I don't even, know. but. But all that to say, um, 
there's something about that very work ethic that, um, you know, combined with the opportunity to have these great teachers that really helped me have this tool of music to go make a living with. You know, it's interesting because you've your that that skill has taken you around the world, and uh, I came across across this uh, little nugget online, and uh, I apologize in advance if I'm mispronouncing it, but. Uh, Speaking of the world stage, uh, you were Canada's pop entry, and I'm pretty sure that you were the ultimate winner after all was said and done in the 2014 Vinya Del Mar International Song Festival. Yes, in Chile. So I, I did go. I, I went down. Um, it was the last two weeks of February, the first couple of days of March of earlier this year. It was minus 55 in Saskatchewan. It was plus 30 in Chile. It was horrendous. And, uh, and I went down there and competed in this competition. And, and this this thing... Um, lesser known to North Americans, but huge in the Southern Hemisphere. Like, I didn't grasp it till I got down there. And I was like, holy smokes, this thing takes the Southern Hemisphere by storm. Um, and the Spanish-speaking world. Like, um, it, it, we performed each night in this huge outdoor amphitheater in the warm, you know, summer air to 20,000 screaming Latinos and Latina people who loved music. And, and the TV broadcast of this live performance reached around the Spanish-speaking world to about 100 million viewers a night. Like, it's this, it's a staggering number, and it's hard to even pretend to wrap your mind around. Because when you think of the Juno broadcast, that reaches about, I think, 3 million at its best. And this is like 100 million. Like, it's like, it's a lot of people. And so if you ever thought you've ever been nervous at a performance ever, well, set that aside and then try to perform knowing there's 100 million people watching you, right? So anyway, it, it was a great experience. Um... A lot of eyeballs on a lot of TV sets, and I sang my song, and and I progressed through the competition, and the judges gave me good scores, and I did eventually end up winning the whole thing, which I still can't figure out how that happened. But um, <laughs> it was great. I won a nice cash prize and a really beautiful trophy, and uh, home I came. And uh, home for a while, you're going to be going back on a tour through there. Yeah, so, so as a result of that, of the exposure, I'm going in November to tour in Peru, um, and in February, I've booked a tour through Mexico. So um, it's quite interesting what the, has happened by way of opening up some doors for, for, for performances. Now, closer to home, but no less uh, astonishing or, or just, uh, you know, honorable, uh, you're going to be doing a, a gig at the Canada Walk of Fame Fest. How did that come about? Um, you know, I did it. I, I did that one last week, and so I, I had a string of shows that, that came about in Toronto. And um, it's funny, like as time goes on, I got, I'm booked by a, a really a really good agency, and my agent works really hard, and um, he's a great guy. And, and I mean, sometimes these bookings come in, and I don't even know where that booking came from. Like, it just I got this email one day saying, "Hey, would you be available on this day?" And I, and I was like, "Yeah, I would be." And um, you know, we played at this festival, and it was a great opportunity. Um, and and it's funny because the more you perform, and I'm sure every Canadian musician finds this, or every musician finds this, the more you perform, the more people obviously see you, but you never know who's in the audience. Like even if there's two people, you, even if there's a one person, like you, you you don't know who they might say, "Hey, did you hear this guy?" You know, like it's the funniest thing. So you can, you know, I, I'm sure it came about like that. Yeah. I, I, I don't. know. But, wow. but it was a delight anyway. <laughs> Man, you know, it's interesting because you, you mentioned earlier that uh, you are um, classically trained and, and spent quite some time learning piano in the classical vein. But your online biography reads, often compared to a mixture of early Elton John, Ben Fold, Sarah Slane, uh, Billy Joel, Harry Chapin. I've seen everybody on there except for Harry Chapin and Ben Fold's live. So right. I can certainly agree with that. Uh, but it, it strikes me that you've got seen some of your videos. Uh, you've got broader influences, not just piano man and piano women, more singer songwriter. What do you draw from when you're composing and, and putting that into a live performance context? It's funny. Like um, what I listen to is really diverse. Like I I listen I do listen to a, like I do gravitate to singer pianists in what I really like to listen to. But I'm also on this for the last couple of years. I've been on this huge Canadian indie kick and it seems to be whatever my ears are liking seems to be this Canadian indie sound whatever the heck that is and I love CBC radio too and what they what they do um, so I listen to that but growing up I mean a lot of the first stuff I listened to was old country like like we're talking like you know Waylon Jennings and you know Merle Haggard and and because that's what my parents listened to and then 
as a teenager, you discover pop and rock music. And, but then I was always, as you know, studying classical piano, love classical piano music, love symphonic music and opera. Um, I just, uh, so my, my tastes all over the map. And then I've, I've mentioned this before to people that you don't consciously know this, that but everything that goes into you, into your mind that you listen to and into your ears, when you start to write music, it kind of influences what comes out of you, and you all, you kind of don't really have much of a say in it. Like you, <laughs> if you if you if you if you're letting your muse do what your muse is doing, right? So therefore, the sound you're hearing, like it's a it's a funny result of a lot of funny inputs. Like the output is a result of the inputs, and you know, like I'm really I'm, I'm in the middle of recording a new record right now. It, it's actually almost done, and um. It's really neat to see some of the sounds on there because um, it, it's quite diverse. It, it hangs together as a nice album, but the sounds are quite diverse. So it, it, your ear was right in hearing a lot of different influences. Well, it's funny. I, I, I did notice that you're uh, you're in the middle of recording a new album. There's some stuff available already on iTunes and directly linked to your website. When you're doing the live performances, though, and you're in a, a folk club setting, do you change those influences at all or do you do you do you modify your style of performing um i don't i wouldn't say i really modify the style of performing but i mean for example when we go to the calgary folk club um on the 10th it'll be a duo it'll be myself piano and vocals and then my guitar player he, he plays electric guitar and he has a really great collection of effects pedals um uh, guitar player his name is brody moninger he's from moose jaw great musician he'll be with me doing this duo show and I mean, by virtue of us being two instruments and a voice, it'll be kind of stripped down, which as a result sort of focuses in on the lyrics. So by virtue of how we'll present it, it'll be a bit kind of more conducive to that environment, you know? So, uh, you know, because uh, I, I do try to make those choices, but the songs themselves are the songs. I mean, I have a gig this coming Tuesday in Toronto. It's, it's quite, a, they wanted a whole band and all the bells and whistles and everything. It'll be the same songs. It'll just sound a lot bigger. But for, I think for the folk club, the intimacy of what we're going to do, I think it should really work. Like I, I love to communicate the song to an audience. You know, yeah. that's ideal for me. Excellent. Well, I'm kind of feeling like I'm a little bit late to the Jeffrey Straker party, but I'm looking forward to seeing you live next Friday at the Calgary folk club and continued success. Uh, stay safe until you get here. <laughs> Thank you very much, and I look forward to meeting you. Excellent. Thank you.